I think he got the point. This is uh, the classic line from uh, um, James Bond. And uh, the guy Vargas was sneaking up on him. He was on the beach. You, you, some of you, most of you guys probably don't remember this. James Bond <laughs> was an action hero. <laughs> <laughs> he was in that movie. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. So he's, he's on the beach with a good looking girlfriend, and the bad guy's sneaking up behind him, and he's got the pneumatic spear gun laying next to him, right? So what does he do? He shoots the spear gun and shoots shoots the guy and impales him onto the uh, onto the uh, the, the uh, palm tree there. Well, yeah, you know, he goes against all principles. You don't ever shoot a spear gun out of the water, you know. Uh, uh, but yeah, it, it, to make the point is, you know, he, I think he got the point. But yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about safety now, okay? Uh, okay, there you go. Thunderball was the movie. Thunderball, right? Um, but you guys might have seen this one. This was just recent. Miami. Miami. This was a couple kids down on a lake, and uh, it was a pneumatic spear gun. And um, we don't get all the details as to whose gun it was, uh, but he was said he was trying to load it, and he accidentally shot his buddy in the head. The kid lived. Kid lived, thank God, but you know it's a, it's a brain injury. So uh, this was not long ago, six months ago, you know, six eight months ago. Yeah. So again, uh, know where your muzzle is at all times. Know where that point is. Okay. I got one more. If, if, if you don't like bad things, close your eyes. Okay. All right. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. It was funny when guys said, "Hey, I, I, you're writing a spear fishing book. Oh, let me show you this one." I don't know any about the circumstances of this, but he was obviously behind. His, no, no, he was obviously in front of his buddy. Okay, and uh, not a good thing. Not a good thing. So we are going to advocate when you spearfish, you spearfish side by side. <laughs> Side by side. Uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I stay behind him. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he couldn't find me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, all right. So yeah. basically, um, the, the main thing here is to check to make sure that your gun is good, your bands are good, all your lines and wishbones and all that. Make sure there's no apparent problems. Um, r rinse it thoroughly with fresh water and then whatever the manufacturer recommends, typically just fresh water. In the uh, in the trigger mechanism, that's the only really moving parts that you have on on that. And the pneumatics are different. Um, we'll talk a little bit about pneumatics. Um, the spear guns are designed to f basically function underwater only, not above uh, above the water. So never load or fire a spear gun out of the water. We load our spear guns as we go down. We jump in the water, unloaded. Okay, on the way down. We load, okay, and we're pointing away from each other. And why am I loading my gun on the way down? Because you might see a fish coming down. I might see a big fish coming down. Okay, <laughs> it happens more times than not. On the way down, there's the big fish, and, and you know maybe they got lucky because they just put you right there. But I think it's the element of surprise. I think it really is. So on the way down, and we're back to back. My buddy's back to back with me, and we're loading. Okay, so. Uh, and you, you're okay to have your gun loaded, just point it down, that's all, okay? Um, always uh, go into and come out of the water with the spear gun unloaded. Matter of fact, there are some dive uh, charters, if you come up with a loaded spear gun, they'll take that spear gun and throw it back in the water, okay? Because uh, absolutely no loaded spear guns on the boat, okay? So, and then what we typically do is you hand, you hand the spear gun butt first, to the dive master or your buddy or whatever. And just be careful of that point. You want to keep the point away from you. You, know, you don't want to hand it to him like this and get you impaled on it. So just sort of to the side, butt first. But that's typically butt first is how we do uh, things. Um, and then, like I say, load and unload your spear gun pointing away from other divers. And it's part of muzzle awareness. You should know where your muzzle is at all times. And I treat my spear gun like it's loaded at all times. I, I keep the gun down, even when we're going to show you. I'm not going to point guns. At, we're not going to do that. You know, point it down. You know, uh, my dad was a police officer, and I was I've been around guns all my life, so I always treated a gun like it was 
on oh, it's on, uh, oh, uh, it was loaded, right. Um, uh, and then side by side by your buddy. This is probably one of the uh, hunters. Uh, and I don't care whether we're hunting for lobster or I'm hunting for fish. I like to be side by side. And what I mean by that is, you know, we're all heading south because that's where I'm going right now for some reason. I want my buddy there. I don't want him behind me, particularly with a spear gun. Do I? And I don't want to have to keep looking behind me. Where the hell is he? And if you stop to, to get something, that was Joel, I would go with him last week or whatever, then I don't know you're back behind me, okay? I'm just going to keep on going. And then likewise, I don't really want you in front of me, especially if I have a spear gun. I don't want you in front of me because I, I don't want you um, scaring my fish, okay? And typically we try to catch a reef where I'm catching sort of an edge and there'll maybe be an inside edge and we'll work that edge together. And same thing, if, I, if you stop for a lobster, I know I see you do that. There's so many times I can tell you, I'm watching my buddy out of the corner of my eye, and all of a sudden he goes into what's called a shooting position. What's the shooting position? <laughs> he's on, his arm is outstretched, he's starting to pedal, right? And he's heading towards the fish, okay? I see that out of the corner of my eye. Well, I start, what's he chasing? I start to go wherever he's going, so that there's sometimes a likely that that fish will come in my direction. So that's kind of the way we, we work it together. You're watching him. Hard to do three guys, even just regular good old diving, to be honest with you. But we're, we've dove enough together that we know what each other are doing. And, uh, you know, if you stop to get a lobster, I'm not really going to help you, okay? I'm going to look for lobster in my area, okay? You know, that's, that's the deal. I'll throw you a little bone on the lobster side there. So, I, you know, now, if you call me over, that means there's a bunch of lobster, and i got to help you. So I'll, I'll, I'll jump in and help out, okay? You know, or you shoot a big fish, I'll come over to help you to secure it. I'll, I'll come over to help, you know, grab the fish, okay? And, um, and sometimes, if it's a real big fish, uh, it's time to put it on the shaft. Of, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Definitely. A big grouper, or right now uh, cobia. Uh, we can't shoot grouper right now. Okay. Just to let you know, January, February, March, April, no grouper, none. Okay. So uh, it, that's in the state of Florida. You know. All right. But if, if you, you shoot a big, big cobia or whatever, um, put another shaft in. Okay. All right. Questions? You guys are okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, cover the spear uh, tip with some type of protect, protective uh, device. It all comes with that red little yeah. doohickey or the tape. black little doohickey. Oh, yeah. yeah, my book. Um, we got we got a, one of our buddies. Uh, I attributed this to Paul. He, he drinks a lot of Chardonnay, a lot of wine. So the corks are really really good. So we take a cork, we drill up about halfway. And we got an unlimited supply of corks because of Paul. And we they sell, really we, we sell your tip covers here too. No, <laughs> corks are for free. <laughs> for free, okay. And an unlimited supply, and they float. They float. All right. So, and by the way, they do have a lot of these for sale. Okay. How to throw that one in? All right. Um, now here's here's a contention. All right, here's a contention. Keep the safety on until you're prepared to shoot. Only load the spear gun with the safety on position. Uh, what that means is loading it. A lot of times the the shaft has to be uh, in order to get into the trigger mechanism. It has to be in the firing position or fired position. But once you've locked it and then you put the engage the safety, then you load your gun. And I keep my finger on the. The, the trigger guard on the outside because only when I'm ready to shoot a fish do I put my finger in there after I've taken the safety off. Now, some folks don't, there are spear guns, particularly custom spear guns, that don't even have a safety. And when you talk to commercial guys, safety what? Okay? They don't believe in safeties, they, they, they get in the way. You know, do I have the safety on or off? Okay? But their business is to shoot a lot of fish, okay? We're here to be recreational spear hunters and try not to kill each other. So my, my thinking is, and it's just a habit, I keep the safety engaged 
and most of them also are pretty simple. Um, and they're pretty simple, just one finger to take the safety off when the safety's off. Then I put my finger only in the guard when I'm ready to shoot, okay? But again, that's my philosophy, and, that, and I gotta go with that. There'll be other people that'll teach differently, but for me, it's all about making sure we're, we come home safe. Um, and then, uh, again, like I said, put, place the finger inside the trigger guard. Be certain of your target. Hunting in poor visibility or rough conditions add to the risk of uncertainty. Uh, we're lucky we have actually fairly decent visibility here. You know, there's some folks up north that do some uh, spear hunting and or the, the, uh, the west coast of Florida that can't see uh, very much and, you know, make sure that you see what you're going to shoot. Um, once you fire, you can't take the shaft back. You own the results. And then uh, if you hit a solid surface as a rock or whatever, uh, you may have some problems there to do with the shaft. So be careful about what's behind the fish and what comes in the path of your, your shaft. Once you shoot, it's done. Okay? And, you know, we've learned this from diving together. If, if we have one guy going on, like there's a, a fish went in a hole, okay, one stays high, one goes in, all right? If I'm watching, I'm watching high, and my buddy's looking for the fish. I'm not, because I've made this mistake before. He's on one side, I'm on the other. I shoot, I miss the fish, shoom, I'm right out the other side, okay? So learn, learn from my mistakes. It wasn't, it wasn't pretty. So now, we're one above and one down in where you're the, the thick of it, okay? And then my other thing is um, when you, like particularly with lobstering, I have my gun pointed away from me. Um, and I, I try to make, you know, really special, I, I really kind of focus on that. If, if my lobster's over here, my gun is pointed away, and now I do my thing, okay? Those lobsters are gonna say, stay there, and. A lot of times, you look over your shoulder and there'll be a nice hogfish, or a big fat red, or a grouper, or, 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 or some, something else that'll be just over there and you go, hang on just a minute, I'll be right there, don't, don't go away, boom, and then you come back to the lobster. So they're curious, they want a free meal too, and they'll, they'll think that, oh, that you, for whatever reason, so I always point my gun away from my work area, particularly when I'm working with, with lobster. Okay. Um, excitement and a thrill is why we spearfish. Uh, just keep keep your control. Keep your control. If you see that you're kind of getting a little excited and all of a sudden, you know, things are happening, think to yourself, all right, let's go on. And it, it does happen. I mean, you know, the fish are flying around and you're slinging shafts around, you want to really remain under control as to what you're doing, okay? Because it does get pretty crazy uh, sometimes. All right, and then um, store your spear gun in a secure or locked area, particularly if you have children. Um, it's a weapon. It's a weapon and treat it like one, okay? so. I